a shocking revelation that might just take Nagaland by storm. Six persons have been arrested in connection of supplying ammunition from the police central store, the ammunition store from the Chumukidima police complex. Now, the six persons that have been arrested are from Dimapur and um, the main accused is Michael Yantan, supposedly, reportedly, and he has confessed to the crime. Michael Yantan is the inspector of the central store and supposedly around a total of 2,480 ammunition was supplied and he sold it to one Lanu Pongan, Lanu Sanan Pongan for 4.25 lakhs. Now uh, the question here arises now, was Michael Yantan the sole supplier of this ammunition to the other five? Now uh, we have questioned the home Minister of the State, Y. Patton, who met with Nagalan News Network and Global Window at the Rhododendron Hall here at the police complex, where the Commissioner of Police of Dimapur was also present, as well as the uh, team leader of the SIT formed particularly for this case. They have informed Nagaland News Network also that uh, the operation started on July 9th and it went on till 12th. Sting operations were conducted where a baleno was intercepted at six mile and where three bags, sacks of uh, ammunition was found. Let's hear what the Home Minister has to say as well as the Commissioner of Police and mainly the team leader of the SIT. Yes, I also came down from Goyma today to inquire about this uh, loss of ammunition from Chimu. So I have uh, shared a little bit with my CB and her AIG. So, so far, he is my autumn sir. He is a CB. So far, as per information received from them, six culprits have been arrested and the main accused that Michael have confessed that he is the main crime, he is the main accused, he have confessed it. So our CB will, since he is the investigation officer, my SID is also here. They will share up to what extent they have uh, done for inquiry and how many are yet to arrest. Uh, my CB and SID will highlight. See, this operation all started on the 9th of July. We got information through our sources that. There was, a, uh, there was going to be a transaction of illegal arms ammunition. So we have, accordingly, we have laid an ambush, we laid in certain important locations on the national highway and like uh, important junctions. But on the 9th of July, we were somewhat unsuccessful. We couldn't get anybody, like we didn't get any vehicle number, just that we got the information we got was it's supposed to be an SUV car of a purple or black color. That much information we had. So on the 9th till 10th morning, 6 a.m., three different parties, or uh, more than, uh, I think around five parties, we have laid an ambush type in different locations, but we couldn't get it. So they reported to me and they were saying, sir, we couldn't get. So I said, okay, but let's give it another try tonight also. So accordingly, we again engage our personals, like we're laying, like ambush type chapter. We have kept them again. Then uh, on the 10th evening, between 8.30 to 9.00, a vehicle, one uh, Baleno car, which was of dark blue or dark purple color, which was intercepted in six mile area. And on checking like uh, in three rice bags, we recovered 
uh, we seized and recovered some am ammunition. And two persons were in that vehicle when it was intercepted in one Roshan Zeleng and another Joyson. So accordingly, they were apprehended and on initial inter uh, interrogation, they said uh, they've, they've revealed that they've picked up that consignment of ammunition, illegal uh, consignment from one lady called Elizabeth. So subsequently, they were taken uh, to that house and that lady Elizabeth is she is also a Zeleng but her late husband is a uh, one late Colonel SS Colonel Wilfred Tanku so uh, she was apprehended when house according this house search was conducted in her house also but no further ammunition was uh, recovered from her residence then when she was interrogated, she has revealed that it was brought by one Timbam, no? Timbam Shimre, alias Apam. He's supposed to be an SSL style deputy closer of the NSE and IM. So that night too, uh, through her, we got her mobile number. But then we found that his mobile was switched off. So uh, we were trying to track him down the whole night the next morning also. So we have written to the service providers also, even if the phone is switched off, like the last location through the uh, MI number, we were trying to track him. But all day we couldn't track him. And only towards evening after five, I think. Yeah, after five, we could track him down. And he was subsequently arrested and taken into custody. And on interrogation, Initially, uh, he was not divulging, but then ultimately, under certain pressure, intensive interrogation, he has divulged that it was arranged and brought by one Mr. Lanu Pongen. Uh, Lanu Pongen also, initially, we couldn't find him. So after intensive uh, efforts, we could ultimate, uh, ultimately uh, arrest him. Then initially was maintaining that those ammunitions that is both of the SLR and the INSAS those were arranged one one Mangleng Konyak who is supposed to be a rhino poacher in Assam. He was maintaining that Mangleng Konyak has brought it from Assam and I took it over from Assam Nagaland border. He was maintaining that. So for one whole day he was maintaining that. Then just for records, around 5.30, p.m. our SIT head, he came to my office and he was telling that he's maintaining that. So I told him that, okay, if that's what he's maintaining, no? then tell him that you have to shoulder all the responsibilities, tell him that we'll book him under NSA and send him direct to TR jail. That's <coughs> what I advised my officer. Then he went and did the same thing. So around 11, uh, 8 30 p.m., he, he diverged that, revealed that it was brought by one arm branch inspector, Michael. That is of Yantang, of our department. Michael Yantang. Sir. So, accordingly, uh, we pick him up around 8.30 in the evening. So, we have picked him up, and then, uh, accordingly, we have sent his uh, arrest report to police headquarters, and on interrogation, he has revealed that he is solely responsible. And... For your information, he is the in charge of the arms ammunition branch of the police central store. So he has the keys with him. So he has revealed that he is solely responsible. We have tried our best and still trying whether he has any other connections. But he said he is responsible. Uh, 
he has he has taken he was paid by Lanu uh, an amount of rupees four point twenty five lakhs. Mm. So he was saying he, he was he, and not to attract attention also when he came to he couldn't re, uh, exactly remember the date but he said on fourth or fifth July he has come to uh, to take those emanations those 1,500 rounds of SLR and one 1,500 rounds of SLR and 1,000 rounds of uh, 5.56 in SARS. Nah? He has come discreetly and that also he didn't bring even his vehicle. He said he has hired an auto, kept it outside the uh, police central store gate and then he has packed those ammunition in three rice uh, empty rice sacks, na? Tate and he has taken it to the house of Lanu. That Michael Yantang. Michael Yantang, sir. Mm. Our police uh, armed branch inspector, na? So uh, now we are, we have taken. Initially, we have taken five days uh, police remand, and then another two days, and we'll be praying for. Another police remand also. We are according to procedures. Like it depends on the court also. Like, but since he's still not diver, uh, revealing that whom he's supposed to hand over. Nah? But then we are suspecting that he's having two, three mobile phones. So far, we have recovered only one. So we have written to the service providers, providers also, like the. Uh, the BSNL, the Airtel, Air all those, huh? so that which contacts, uh, contacts he was having. Huh? So uh, we are hoping that very sure, very sure and uh, very soon we'll be able to uh, identify his other contacts. Huh? Because he said he has sold it off for uh, 4.5 lakhs to this. Mr. Lanul Pongen. So that part, he was saying he, he's trying to get contacts, whom to sell. That part he's still not revealed. But then we are trying to get all his other phone number, phone numbers, and then through the CDRs, nah, we are trying to get his contacts, and we are hopeful that very soon we'll be able to identify like his contacts, where he is supposed to. So, uh, dispose of the ammunitions. So, so far it is that. Uh, so, sir, central story the inspector said. Mm. So, where was the OC? That is, uh, sir, Mayamo. Yeah, yeah. The OC mm. of the central mm. store. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Where did you this? No, see, since we have four branches, so this ABI Michael, no? He, he is in charge of the arms and munition branch. And that also, see, if I were in charge and if I have to become unscrupulous, no, I won't make it really public like to attract attention. No. So discreetly, this Yantang, no, uh, ABI Michael, he has discreetly taken out this ammunition. No. So, after the case was registered, we have done the audit, and accordingly we have realized uh, we have detected that this much was missing. Huh? As for the OC, whoever is posted, his duty or her duty is to carry out the uh, annual inspection once a year. So, sir, central store mm. at the high security area zone, is it? Mm. CCTV surveillance camera are sir. Sentry and Nikimata, uh, negligence, Kumbada, So is that true? No, we can't say that. No? Sentries are there. But when your boss comes there, no? nobody borders. No? And for us, for that matter, rank matters. No? Yes. Even if I go drunk, no? your sentry will still salute you. No? So it is not only Nagaland police, but with all uniform services. No? When certain uh, uh, like mistakes comes up, then inquiries comes up, then 
of course, he or she, no matter how the rank is, will get the punishment. But then, as humanly, what is being there, no? we go by the rank. So, even if he comes late in the evening, also the sentry will never ask. Serki Gurulaije, na. So in this thing, he has revealed that nobody is involved. He himself uh, alone was involved, and he has already taken four lakhs twenty-five thousand from that Lanu Pongyan, and then for how much he is going to sell, he has not yet revealed. So we are trying on that. And uh, what has Lanu revealed so far? Since he's the one that paid money to Michael Yatta, has he revealed in regard to paying that amount? He has got paid by Elizabeth. <coughs> Elizabeth got paid by Joyson. Nah. So it all started with nine, nine lakhs, nah? It started with nine lakhs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One Roshan Mopui. Okay. Roshan, Roshan Mopui and Jason, they were in Balenoka. So they were... The, the first two who were arrested. So this Roshan Mopui paid Elizabeth. Elizabeth paid Timpam. Timpam paid Lanu. Lanu. Mm. Are they all residents of Nagaland? Uh, yes, they are all residents. They are all residents. Except that Roshan, he works mm. in transport business in Guwahati. But he has children here looking after the children here. So his transport services comes from Guwahati to up to Nepal. Sir, there is a lot of rumors going on, mm. but you have clearly stated that, sir, the investigation is ongoing. Yeah. So we understand that, but there is a lot of rumors talk in the towns and cities and around all over mm. that not only Michael Yanda, mm. but, sir, Nakhalin police uh, officers, yeah. higher up officers, mm. they are okay. So, sir, how serious this very case? I'm all throughout with them. No. The first night also, till 2 a.m., 3 a.m. also, even if I don't come out also, I never sleep. We have an SIT. No. So he himself is saying that. No. Taking the gravity of this issue, in the first place, this case was endorsed to one ASI. But looking into the uh, amount of numbers of ammunition that has been seized, it was then re-endorsed to one UBSI. But Sir CP, looking into the seriousness of this case, he formed an SIT. So that very evening. That very evening. So I, I was given the, uh, the charge as a team leader of this SIT. When we arrested Michael, when we arrested Michael, in the first place, we thought, no, he won't be the only person involved. Hmm. As an investigating officer, that was our first thought. There may be... Junior, junior rank officers also. There may be higher rank officers also. That, that is our first thought. So because of which, I prayed to CP, CP prayed to this, uh, DG for stock verification. Because we cannot just go and stock verif uh, verify the stocks in the police central store. So after the consent we got from uh, DGP, we did stock verification of especially this 7.62 into 5.1 SLR ammunition as well as 5.56 into 4.5 uh, mm in SAS ammunition. So we have to do the whole day counting of those ammunition. We did that so that uh, to prove that those ammunitions which were seized are the only ammunition that is missing from the stock. So we tried counting each and every ammunition. Every, every bullet was counted. And, and we, in this armed branch, there are other rank officers also. Well, there is one SI, Jesengule. There is one Havildar Habemo. So we, we also interrogated them. We also took their statement. But like Sir has said, the key is with Michael. He is the in charge. So this two rank officers who, who works under him follows his direction but on that particular day means the store was not open the st store key was not open but since the key was with michael taking advantage of his position he took out this ammunition for his personal benefit so that is what i wanted to clarify because we have done a thorough investigation we have even counted all the bullets we have stock verified so 
and we have also cross-checked, taken the statement of even uh, OC Central Store. It, stock verification was done in his knowledge, along with those uh, rank officers working under Michael Yantan. We will set up a CCTV in that area. We, I have advised our officers that in future we will have a double locking where only inspector cannot open and OC cannot open. One lock will, key will be with OC and one <coughs> will be with the in charge of that uh, store. Yeah. Uh, coming back to the case again, the uh, Michael Yantan, the main accused in this now, is in police custody, custody or not? Since he was arrested on the 12th, where? today is the 25th. Where, what is his status right now? Where he was he? forwarded to judicial custody. He was remanded to police custody for seven days. Okay. He was forwarded to judicial custody with a prayer not to enlarge him on bail. And he is already in judicial custody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Basing on uh, the investigation is still going on. Mm -hmm. The SIT is trying its best, best to unearth further details if, the, if any. So, if requirement, we can all, we will always pray to court for police remand again for further investigation. Okay. Yeah. As as of the investigation that we are taking up, the SIT is very serious about this case. We are doing our best, and when we look at the chain of flow of money as well as, as well as the chain of flow of ammunition, we have not even left one accused. We have arrested every, everybody uh, who are involved in this case. So I believe uh, taking this into consideration, I think uh, a, a, this SIT will be given a way to complete the case, which we have started. So that was the press briefing uh, from uh, Deputy Chief Minister Y. Patton, who is also in charge of home, as well as the Commissioner of Police, Dimapur, and the SIT team leader. Now, they have also said that uh, Michael Yantan, who is the armed branch inspector, the designation of armed branch inspector, is in judicial custody at this point, and investigation is underway. Keep watching Naglin News Network for more updates on this news. Esther here with camera person Moi for Naglin News Network.